Pastor Mark from Faith United Methodist Church in Waynesboro. We're here at a beautiful location, a beautiful morning here. I'll share a little bit about this spot again uh, in a few moments, but it's a joy to be able to be together again for worship. This is Baptism of Our Lord Sunday that we celebrate uh, together. Uh, just a couple quick announcements uh, before we begin worship this morning. We did our best to get everyone's uh, offering envelopes out to them uh, for this new year. So if you did not receive uh, yours, we apologize for that. Please contact us in the office so that we can see that you get, get yours. But we tried to get everyone's out here in the last couple weeks. Uh, financial ministry... Um, was a big help with that also our family coordinators uh, so we want to thank them uh, next Sunday we celebrate human relations Sunday so we do have special envelopes for that uh, they are available in the Welcome Center uh, if you want to participate in that uh, opportunity next week next weekend as we gather together is human relations Sunday across the connection and just a reminder, uh, if you want to get in touch with me, uh, I would enjoy hearing from you anytime. But the easiest, quickest way to contact me right now is to use my cell phone. So you can call or text me on my cell phone. Uh, that's the best way to get a hold of me now. Uh, I would enjoy hearing from you. So let's prepare ourselves now to worship the Lord. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nathaniel Byers, and I'm the worship leader here at Faith United Methodist Church. So for today's theme, we're dealing with baptism, which kind of is, you know, as we like to call it, an outward symbol of an inward faith or an inward transformation, you know, as it pertains to coming to Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. So these songs I've picked today kind of deal with that theme of healing, also with a little bit of that theme of, you know, water you know, is intertwined with that, you know, water as the symbolism of um, healing, um, renewal, and ultimate um, cleansing from our sins. So this first song I'm going to sing today is called Healing Rain. Thank you. 
title time of prayer. Uh, we just have many things to be thankful for this beautiful morning, this beautiful location, the gift of winter. Uh, we're in a new year together. We're moving along in this new year already. And we're blessed and we're just thankful. Also, we're reflecting on our baptisms today as uh, part of our worship. And that's a joy and that's a blessing that we can be thankful for that gift of water that we celebrate today as well. Larry Callimer uh, is home from the hospital. We're thankful for that. We just want to continue to keep Larry in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, also, Ginger Snively still remains in the Chambersburg Hospital, but um, family has shared with me that she has improved greatly, so we're very thankful for that. Uh, their hope is she can return home uh, very soon. We'll continue to keep you posted. Ginger still is in the uh, Chambersburg Hospital. We want to continue to keep her in our thoughts and prayers. So also, uh, we did uh, receive an update from Bishop Park and the cabinet uh, related to COVID-19. Uh, they are asking us to, uh, to just remain closed with any in-person worship, uh, to try to limit any in-person activities at the church if at all possible, indoors, um, only essential, very essential items. So uh, still a lot of concern, our church leaders, uh, over your safety, COVID-19. Uh, I did hear just this past week that the uh, positivity rate, the infection rate for Franklin County is still over 20%, which is very, very high. If I heard correctly, we actually had one county, uh, if I heard right, I couldn't believe this, but if I heard right, one county in the state was around 50% this past week. So still, um, we still need to be very cautious, very careful at this time, and we certainly wanna keep that in our thoughts and prayers as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we're just so thankful for the, the gift of this new year, the gift of winter. The beauty of this uh, day and this weekend and the opportunity to be together in spirit as we can offer our worship to you this weekend again. And we reflect on your baptism this weekend, O oh Lord, and it gives us an opportunity to be thankful for our baptisms. If we've never had that opportunity to experience the sacrament of baptism, O oh Lord, it's also an invitation to us. It's a uh, it's an opportunity for us to consider that, and that's, uh, that's a gift, and we're just very thankful. We're thankful for this beautiful place uh, that we can be bringing worship from again today. We're just thankful, oh Lord, for our church family, and again, especially for Warren and Linda and for Nathaniel and for Sandy and many others who help us with worship, but for all of our church family who've been just so supportive and cooperative through this challenge, oh Lord, we just give you thanks. Just continue to guide us and be with us. And we're so thankful that Larry's home from the hospital. Just surround him and continue to offer him healing and wholeness. And we're thankful too that Ginger is being well cared for at the Chambersburg Hospital. We're just thankful for everyone that's working very hard there today, this weekend. Just continue to surround them and be with them, O oh Lord, be with Ginger and those that are caring for her. We're just so thankful for the, the great improvement that we've seen in her this past week. And we know you're at work, O oh Lord, and offering healing and just continue to be with them and surround them and touch her, O oh Lord, with your healing presence. Just be with all of us as we continue on this journey and help us, O oh Lord, not to grow weary and tired, but to consider others and to love others as we love ourselves, as you call us to. And just help us to do everything we can, O oh Lord, to keep each other safe. Just continue to be our prayer coach as you teach all your disciples all around the world, O oh Lord, how to pray with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. I thought that I would give you a little update on our um, FaithCom activities since COVID started. I can't believe it, and you probably can't either. It's been 40 weeks, 40 Thursdays, that we have done um, our FaithCom activities, the food pantry activities, in a different way. This room isn't used very much because we have been out in the Welcome Center for those 40 weeks. But um, during that time, we've had low numbers, like 11, and high numbers, like 41. So it varies week by week. We never know for sure who's coming or, or what week's going to be a good one. But we're here anyway, doing it. During that time, from March 19th to December 31st, we served 751 families. And during the month of December, we served 79 families. And that was pretty good because we had one snowy day and two rainy days. We also, of course, I think I told you before, during that time we gave 98 families Thanksgiving giveaway meals. We've um, received some very special gifts many from um, our church members, but we also received some from the community recently. The New Baltimore Church of God up on South Mountain every year remembers us and they do a collection for Thanksgiving and then they do another collection for Christmas. So we received over 500 pounds of food from them this, this fall. We also um, received a $150 um, check from the Mason Dixon Corvette Club and um, the last couple years they've been um, remembering us at the Christmas season as well. Talking about our um, gifts, we have been giving out some gifts for Christmas as well because you have been generous with us we have been able to give some special things to our clients. This year we treated the children probably better than we treated the adults. We gave the children $5 gift cards to McDonald's because every child likes to go to McDonald's for a special treat, as well as we put them on to um, Famous Amos chocolate chip cookie bags. The adults got something a little more practical. They got um, coupons for extra food here at the food pantry, as well as some bottles of hand sanitizer. Um, because we know that that's important right now with all the COVID that's going on. We are very blessed here at FaithCom, and our goal for 2021 is to continue to provide this outreach program for families in need in our community but also to keep our volunteers and our clients safe. And that's why we have to continue to work out of the Welcome Center instead of here. Thank you very much for all you do to help us. This next song is called Shine Jesus Shine.
final song is called Grace Like Rain. <clears throat> Father, thank you so much for this day, for this time that we have together to, to worship you and to um, reflect and understand um, what it is to be healed, what it is to be redeemed, and what it means to be renewed by your, um, by, um, 
your Holy Spirit. Um, when we think about baptism, um, that's something that, you know, really symbolically um, indicates, you know, an inward change within us. When we make that decision to be baptized, that shows, you know, a certain degree of a heart change inside of us and an outward expression of that. And Lord, when we consider the symbolism of water as it pertains to the cleansing um, of our hearts and the cleansing of our souls, um, help us to really appreciate that and to really understand um, what that means, um, that you are able to renew us and that you loved us enough to die for us and atone us for our sins. So Lord, help that to be something on our minds this week as we reflect on the message today and the songs that we've sung. And I pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The scripture reading today is from Genesis 1. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was without shape or form. It was dark and over the deep sea, and God's wind swept over the waters. God said, let there be light, and so light appeared. God saw how good the light was. God separated the light from the darkness. God named the light day and the darkness night. There was evening and there was morning the first day. Let us pray. God, please be with us as we move through this tough time and move into this new year. And please be with those who are struggling during this time. And also please be with Pastor Mark as he brings us the word. Amen. I wanna thank uh, Don Hardman. Don brought us the scripture for this weekend, uh, Old Testament near, near the very beginning, uh, very beginning of our uh, Bible, um, the first couple verses. Uh, so we're thankful for that. I also want to thank Linda. Linda Strickler brought us the updated uh, Faithcom report and we've been able to keep uh, Faithcom open during this time. Uh, we're very thankful for them, our volunteers, our leadership there and uh, just just very thankful for their their ministry and her report uh, It's been a blessing to many people uh, especially during this time of pandemic that we uh, That we can celebrate together. We're here. We return back to a beautiful location. We're Washington Township and we're really close to the roundabout. We're just uh, near the uh, soccer complex here at uh, in Washington Township. We're here at the East Branch of the Antietam Creek. And just as a reminder, we shared this when we were here earlier, but it uh, it was amazing. I learned some things. Uh, Antietam Creek is actually a 41.7 mile tributary to the Potomac River. Uh, and it's thought that the name Antietam actually is Native American and it, it means swift flowing stream. So as we celebrate baptism this weekend, as we're focused on the power of our words and just how important they are, we thought this would be a, a, a nice location to bring worship from today and we're just thankful. We're thankful for this place. And I want us to just think for a moment of the gift of our hearing. Uh, right now, uh, I can hear the, the beautiful sound of the creek flowing behind me. There's just something about the sound of flowing water, living water, that just uh, is so soothing, comforting to us. Um, but just think how much we would miss, you know, if we didn't have this gift of our sense of hearing. And the reality is that it really, I don't know about you, but I'm sure I just take it for granted a lot of times that we can hear and it's really through this sense of hearing that we also have our sense of speaking. And I want us to think about a little bit today the power of our speech, the power of our words, you know, words really from our hearing since we're very young, we learn and we learn this at a very young age that these words that we use for communication become symbols and they, they represent symbols. So it becomes a very basic, important way that we communicate. And that's just part of who we are. And it's so easy to take that for granted. But being able to hear and being able to speak are so 
closely related to one another. I'm sure at one point uh, in time or the other, we've always, uh, sometime I'm sure we've had the chance to play the, the game of charades. You know, charades can be fun. But the game is challenging because we're forced not to speak. And we have to communicate acting out what it is that's in our mind. So that's a real challenge when we lose that ability to speak. And charades is a fun game that we can use to do that. Now just suppose for a moment that I was going to try to, to share this message with you today without speaking. And I had to act the whole thing out in charades. You know, we'd probably be here all day. And I'm not even sure that I would even get into the very beginning of it. So, you know, the, 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 the ability and the gift to speak, the gift to hear, and, and hopefully what I'm trying to speak, your understanding and your picturing in your own mind, that is just an important gift to us that God has offered. And I want us to consider as we look at the scripture, the very beginning of our scripture, that... Uh, that Dawn shared with us uh, for this weekend that God, when he began to create, actually spoke light into existence. In fact, if we, if we look at the remaining 31 verses of all creation, the first six days, God spoke everything into creation. So God himself uses speech to create. Now, you know, let's ask the question, would God have to have done it that way? Now, you know, I, I would think not. God can certainly do whatever God wants. So it's interesting that God chooses speech as a way to create. And I would like to think and I would like to suggest that God does this. We're created in the image of God. You remember that when we get to that point of creation where human life is created, we are created in the image of God. We are given the gift of speech and hearing. And I would like to think that God really did that to set an example for us, that our speech is powerful. And what we say and what we don't say uh, has long lasting consequences. Let's just think about that for a moment. Everything there is, I'm sure, everything there is started at some point by speech. You and I, I'm sure, started at some point by speech. You know, let's think back. I'm sure there was a point in time when our parents were dating that there was some conversation about wanting to have a family. You and I really got our beginnings through some conversation or through some speech. Now, perhaps you weren't planned. Maybe you were a surprise and that happened sometimes too. But in that case, I'm sure there was conversation of how much of a blessing you were. Speech just becomes a very important, very important part of our life very important part of our ministry and we're focused on baptism this morning because this is the time when we remember and celebrate uh, Jesus's baptism and I thought it might be different we normally do this in the sanctuary and you know we normally do this with our baptismal font but Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River so I thought it would be kind of neat today to remember our baptism from this stream location and I'm going to um, what do you suppose the the temperature of this water is I don't have a way to measure it here this morning um, I think it's pretty cold but uh, let's see here once we'll check it out it's pretty cold you, you take my word for it but this living water I'm sure there's been people baptized in this stream over the years. Uh, I don't know examples of that, but I'm sure that's happened. But let's just take a moment in this new year. On this day, when we remember Jesus' baptism in the Jordan, let's just take a moment here. 
Let's just take a moment to remember our own baptisms, to reflect on that gift, and to be very thankful as we worship together. We have been, uh, over the past several years now, we've been uh, inviting people to share their anniversary dates of their baptisms, and we've been uh, We've been celebrating that as a whole church. We've been doing that now for a couple years and many of you have shared that. And if you haven't shared the anniversary of your baptism with us and you want to do that, you certainly are welcome to do that. And, and we celebrate that and we remember that all throughout the year now as a whole church family, you know. And when we started this a few years ago, uh, we suggested that really, if we think about it, the anniversary of our baptism is even more important than the anniversary of our birth. We, we celebrate birthdays and they are important and they're a special time, but everlasting life is more important than when life begins. And really the celebration of our baptism and remembering our baptism, I think, is more important than even our birthday. and. We have an opportunity this weekend to reflect on that. If you have not been baptized, um, there's nothing that I enjoy uh, being able to talk about more than the gift of baptism, the gift of water. If, if that would be helpful for you at any time to talk about that sacrament, uh, what it means, uh, certainly I would be more than happy to do that. And, and we could discuss baptism and how that takes place. Our church, uh, Faith Church, actually comes from the EUB side of the United Methodist Church. Uh, and I thought it might be interesting. I pulled out a, uh, an old discipline of the EUB Church. My father gave me this. It's actually from 1959. That was the year I was born. So this discipline that I looked at this past week is old. But in the EUB tradition, there were more immersion baptisms than there were in the Methodist tradition. In fact, I found in this uh, 1959 Book of Discipline of the EUB Church, an order for dedication of children, um, which can be done now in our United Methodist tradition as well. But in the EUB tradition, it was more common than certainly in the Methodist tradition um, for children to be dedicated and for uh, adults to be baptized and for immersion baptism. In fact, it was interesting to me, I'll share the words. This is out of the baptism service of the 1959 Book of Discipline for the UB Church. Um, it shares these words. It says, each applicant for baptism shall confer with the minister as to the significance, the mode, and the time and place of baptism. Also, as to his reception into the membership of the Evangelical United Brethren Church. So, I think it's, it's kind of obvious that people weren't always baptized in the church sanctuary. Uh, what's your thoughts? Would you want to be baptized here this weekend right here in the, uh, in the East Branch of the Antietam Creek? It'd be a little chilly. But I think it has happened. I think there are people that are baptized in uh, running streams like this, even on chilly days like this weekend. I think that happens. I think uh, that does happen. And interestingly in our time, there does seem to be a movement where more younger people now are opting for the immersion baptism outside in streams um, in living water as opposed to in sanctuaries. So that's kind of an interesting trend that seems to be emerging again in the life of the church. But let me just share the words. These are older words. But this is just some words about baptism that we can reflect on. Baptism is a sacrament instituted by Jesus Christ and administered by the church from the beginning, it is a symbol of an inner cleansing from sin, a representation of the new birth in Jesus, and a mark of Christian discipleship. That comes from, you know, the 
Book of Discipline 1959 of the UB tradition, but baptism means the same thing today. It certainly has not changed, and we can celebrate that. But I want us to, to focus on the cleansing of our spirits that, that the Lord can do, and that's symbolized in baptism by symbolizing His grace. And that renewing and that cleansing of our spirits certainly has an effect on the words and the speech that we share and the power of the influence of our life. There was a popular song um, that really speaks to this. There was a popular song that was out. This has been a few years ago now. I just want to share some of the lyrics. This song is uh, Speak Life and it's from Toby Mac. Some days just feels perfect. Other days it just ain't working. The good, the bad, the right, the wrong, and everything in between. Yo, it's crazy, amazing. We can turn our heart through the words we say. Mountains crumble with every syllable. Hope can live or die. So speak life, speak life to the dreadest, darkest night. Speak life, speak life when the sun won't shine and you don't know why. Look into the eyes of the brokenhearted. Watch them come alive. As soon as you speak hope, you speak love, you speak life, you speak life. Some days the tongue gets twisted, other days my thoughts just fall apart. I do, I don't, I will, I won't, it's like drowning in the deep. Well, it's crazy to imagine. Words from my lips as the arms of compassion, mountains crumble with every syllable hope can live or die a fairly contemporary song that really speaks powerful powerfully to the power of our speech our words how they can make such a difference think of those times in our life when we were feeling down and someone shared the right words at the right time to lift us up. Think of those times in our life when we felt defeated. And someone just shared those words of encouragement at the right time that just made all the difference. Think of those times when we were feeling bored and someone spoke those words that inspired us, that just gave us new life again and renewed our energy and renewed our spirit. And think of those times when we were angry and somebody just came along and spoke those words that just cooled us down and helped us to put things in perspective again. And think of those times when we were on the wrong path and someone in a very loving way came alongside and just spoke those words of correction which we really needed that just made all the difference in the world so as we worship and as we prepare now to to, to move into a new week together let's just let's just remember the importance of our words and the spirit behind them and let's just help each other through the gift of God's grace that we really symbolize in baptism, that that grace, if we allow it to, to guide our speech, it can make a world of a difference, not only in people's lives, but really in this entire world for the better. Amen.
it's been a joy uh, to be together and worship this weekend from this just this beautiful uh, location here in Washington Township East Branch of the Antietam Creek let's just uh, let's just go to the Lord in prayer together Lord we're just so thankful that we could be together we're thankful for the gift of your love and grace that that symbolized so powerfully in our sacrament of baptism help us to be so thankful for our baptisms uh, you set a good example for us Lord and in, in allowing John to baptize you and we remember and celebrate that this weekend as well but help that spirit to guide our speech our speech is so powerful oh Lord it can do amazing good and it can do amazing evil Help our speech to be guided by you, O Lord, that we can create good. And we can be the light and salt in this world that you create us to. So we're so thankful for the gift of life, this new week that's ahead of us. Help us, O Lord, to go out and follow you this week and help us to, to share the good things that, that you share with us, O Lord. Help us to share them with others and help us to be a Help us to be a good influence. And all God's people said,